So the first type of conversion that we're going to look at is the convert object. And this is the type that I want uh, all the college level students to focus on. Um, it's the most intuitive and uh, most robust in terms of uh, what we're going to be using within the classroom. Uh, for the university students, you're responsible for all three forms of conversion, so make sure you're abreast on all of them. So to start off, the convert object, as we mentioned before, just converts one type of data into another type of data as long as the data is valid for the new conversion type. So we got to make sure we keep an eye on that. So there's two steps to doing the conversion. The first step is that we need a place to store the result. So once the conversion is done, we don't want to lose that data. So we need to store it somewhere in another variable in order to change, manipulate, and use it however we see fit. So create a holder variable. And once you have the holder variable, then it's just a matter of doing the conversion. Do conversion. And store result. Okay, so how do we actually do this? First step, let's come up with a little example. Uh, what we're going to deal with is we'll do a simple one where uh, we talked about it before with the analogy where we had um, the uh, mark report and we want to convert a double into an integer. But before we do that, I want to talk about all the different types of conversions we have. We have the ability to convert to double. We have the ability to convert to a string, to a bool. We also have the ability to convert to an integer. But integers are a little special. So when we type 2 int, what's going to happen is we're going to get three options. We're going to get 2 int 16, 2 int 32, and 2 int 64. The one that we really care about is 32 at this point, so a 32-bit integer. That's all that really means. It means um, a normal size integer. The 64-bit integer is bigger, and a 16-bit integer is obviously smaller. Uh, but the 2 int 32 is what we're going to focus on. So how do we actually do this? Well, let's assume that we have a double variable. Let's say double mark, which starts off with a value of 87.8 as per our example previously stated and then we want to create our holder variable to store the results of the conversion so I'm going to create an, in, uh, an integer let's call this converted mark now it doesn't have a value yet because we haven't done the conversion so how do we actually do the conversion step two well, it's just like any other type of assignment statement. We're assigning a value to a variable. That means we require the equals operator. Whatever is on the left-hand side of the equal sign is the location and memory we're going to store the result. We're going to store the value. So in this case, it's converted mark. Whatever is on the right-hand side is the value that we're going to store. And it's just like any other expression. It's anything that results in a value, but that value better match the same type as converted mark. Well, that's really the whole point of what we're doing here. We're converting. So to do this, we need that keyword convert. And now, when we hit the dot operator, when we type in dot, it's going to give us all sorts of options. The ones that we care about are the ones that start with the keyword to. So as soon as we, start, we write in to, you'll see in C Sharp, the IntelliSense will pop up and you'll see a whole bunch of options. Um, for our purposes, for this example, we want to convert a double to an integer, a 32-bit integer. So I'm actually just going to type in to int 32. Now this is an action. All right? So this convert, this 2 int 32 is an action. So we don't need equal sign at this point. We need brackets. So what goes inside these brackets? Well, whatever value we want to convert. So in this case, we're trying to convert mark. So we're going to write in mark here. Now when we read this code, it says, convert mark, which currently holds the value 87.8, to an integer, a 32-bit integer, and then store the result in converted mark. Now the question you should be asking yourself right now is, what about the decimal? Because currently it says 87.8. We know that integers can't handle decimal places. Can it even do this conversion? Well, it can. The question is, is it just going to truncate that decimal off and get rid of it? Or is it going to round it? Well, in the case of the convert object, it will actually round it. So 87.8 will result in an 88. If that was 87.3, it would result in an 87. So the conversion object will round. 
as opposed to the other versions which may have their own way of handling this type of thing. So that is convert.